I had been hired as the safety man for a new stunt in a water ski show. It was to be performed by the star, Hal Peters. The stunt would be a thriller, if he could live through it. It was a deliberate fall from a kite 100 feet in the air. His boss and his fiance were in the stands. They were as worried as I was, but at least they could see him. There was someone else who was watching too. The stunt had worked, and Hal thought he had it made. He didn't know it then, but he'd have been luckier if it hadn't worked. Oh, he made it, Joe. He made it. Things had gone off perfectly on the first attempt. The others were relieved and happy, but I still had some mental reservations. Sensational, Hal. Give me a couple of days for publicity, then we can put it in the show, okay? Sure. I can spot it right after we do our topside tan about it. Oh, I don't know, Hal. It's awfully dangerous. Dangerous? What do you mean? It's a cinch. What do you think, Mike? It's no cinch, that's for sure. See, he thinks you were just lucky. What do you mean, lucky? That was skill. Don't laugh it off, Hal. If Mike thinks the dive is too dangerous, maybe we'd better just forget it. Oh, come on, Mike. That's a great routine. What do you say, Mike? Let me try it first, huh? But Mike, you're not really a water skier. You ski all right, but you're no expert like Hal here. So, if I can get away with it, then we'll know it's safe, huh? Listen, I got you out here mainly because I was afraid Hal had hurt himself and need help after he hit the water. I didn't hire you to risk your own neck. You wanted my opinion, didn't you? Well, yes, Well, but I it... can't give it to you unless I try the stunt myself. Okay, Mike, it's your neck. Ever since I learned to water ski at Silver Springs, it's been one of my favorite sports. Still, as the boat picked up speed, the test didn't seem nearly as intriguing as it had on dry land. I was thinking of the man who had a tiger by the tail and was afraid to let go. There he goes. When I hit the water, I let myself fall as deep as I could. I wanted to know the maximum time for the underwater part of the stunt. I came up as slowly as possible. A week later, the great show was in full swing. A fine company of water skiers from Cypress Gardens were on hand and performing beautifully. During the first part of the show, I was underwater setting up an automatic movie camera. I was going to record the underwater part of Hal's act for a newsreel company. One of the big events was skiers soaring on kites. Hal's act would be based on this.
then a champion skier, demonstrated a most difficult trick. He was water skiing without skis. It takes perfect coordination. It's kind of hard on your feet, too. Water ski jumps followed, including some fancy turns in midair. Finally, the show reached its high point. Now for the climax of our show. Al Peters in a death-defying leap from the cloud. Hal's big moment had arrived. taking a long time to come up. I knew that it was much too long. I had to get to it, and fast. Sorry, June. He didn't make it. <gasps> no, no. Mr. Ross, Dick James of the Chronicle. Cause of death drowning. Are they sure? Well, as sure as they can be without an autopsy. Autopsy? No. No. Oh, no. I'll get you some water. You Mike Nelson, the guy who pulled him out? Yeah, that's right. How do you think the accident happened? I don't know. He was a top swimmer. 
You never had any trouble with that stunt before. I did. I killed him. It's all my fault. Easy now, Joan, easy. Oh, Mike. If it was anybody's fault, it was mine. No, I no. I let him do the stunt. No. You better take her home, huh? Come on, let's go home, huh? A few hours later, June still seemed to need watching. My own mind was troubled, too, by unanswered questions. Hell. Hell. You're all right, June. I'm still here with you. Uh, you had quite a long sleep for yourself. Go away, Mike. Please. I'm a jinx. Any man gets close to me gets killed. Oh, now stop talking. Mike, nonsense. listen to me. Please go away. I don't want anything to happen to you. Nothing's going to happen to you. Please, me. Mike, go. Hurry, please. All right, all right. Here, you take this pill first, huh? Doctor wanted me to give it to you as soon as you woke up. You'll quiet your nerves, huh? Now go, Mike, please. Hurry. All right, all right. Go, get out, Mike. All right, all right, now, you take it easy. You stop imagining things now, you hear? stadium was empty, but I rounded up the boatmen. I had to try that stunt again, and I had to do it exactly as Hal had done it. The stunt worked just as it had in our tests. I couldn't see how Hal could have been killed by it. Then I remembered my movie camera and went to retrieve it. The film might answer my questions. Something on the film that I was anxious for the police to see. Wait a minute, hold it now. Back up a bit. There. See that diver down there? Doesn't look like he's just waiting for somebody to come down. For hell? That's a pretty dim figure. Could be anybody. If you were down there, could be you. No, 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 no. I was on the beach at the time. Well, that camera operates automatically, doesn't it? Couldn't you have triggered it by mistake? No, that's impossible. No. I can tell by the way he swims in the water that it's not me. I don't handle myself that way. I'm positive that this is someone else. You're trying to tell me that Hal Peters' death wasn't an accident? That it was murder? Yes, I am. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Nelson. A man jumps from a speeding kite 100 feet into the water. He figures to get it. If that's all the evidence you have... No, it isn't. There's something else. Well, let's hear it. I took her home, Hal's girl, after it happened. When I left the apartment, I was almost run down by a car. Couldn't that have been accidental? No, this was deliberate. The car was aimed right at me. Can you prove that? No. The car kept right on going. Yeah, top speed. Did you get the license number? Oh, it all happened so fast, I wasn't able to. And you think there's some connection between that and what happened to Hal Peters? I think there could be, yeah. On the way back, I stopped at June's apartment. It was lucky that I did. You sure this is what you want to do? You've made up your mind. I'm going home, Mike. There's nothing left here for me anymore. Now, before you go, there's something that I'd like to know. 
You said that anybody that got close to you got killed. Well, why'd you say that? Forget it. I didn't know what I was talking about. That's what I figured then. Has something happened to make you change your mind? Yes, it has. What, Mike? What was it? Somebody tried to kill me. No. Not again. What do you mean, not again? June, come on now. Tell me. Tell me. Hal wasn't the first one. All right, now go on. There was another one three years ago in California. Oh. He was a Navy diver like the man I was married to at the time. You were married to a diver? His name was Steve Garth. Garth? I... Leeds is my maiden name. I see. I started to use it again after the divorce. Come on, now. sit down. Tell me what happened. Steve had a partner, Bill Simons. Yeah? I like Bill, but not the way Steve thought I did. The two of them were working together one day on, on the bottom of San Pedro. Mm -hmm. Steve was the only one who came back up. You mean your husband drowned him? Officially, it was an accident. But the Navy gave him a dishonorable discharge. I just don't know, Mike. Well, if you don't know, maybe you better stick around for a while. You might find out something. If those accidents have been accidents, that's one thing. But if they haven't, well, it won't do you any good to run away. You're gonna have to face it sooner or later. Might as well be now. What can I do? Nothing. Not right now, anyway. But I can. Chronicle, uh, I'd like to speak to Mr. James, please. Mike, please be careful. Uh, Mr. James, this is Mr. Nelson. Uh, Mike Nelson, uh, I was to... Yeah, that's right. I've got a story that you might be interested in. Yeah. This is James of the Chronicle bringing you the midnight roundup of the news. On the local front, Mike Nelson, the noted skin diver, revealed today that he intends to prove that the tragic death of Hal Peters, the water skier, was not accidental, but that Peters was murdered. Nelson said that early tomorrow he will retrieve an underwater camera that will provide documentary proof of the killer's identity. I hoped the news story would bring the murderer to the lagoon. Now I had to bait my hook and wait. the dummy in place, bubbles and all, and concealed myself, and none too soon. Another diver was already moving in with a spear gun. As he took aim at the dummy, I felt as if I was witnessing my own murder. He pulled his knife, and as he went in for the kill, I went for him. I knew that it must be Steve Garth, June's ex-husband. He was brave enough when it came to ambushing someone, 
but he didn't like it when the odds were even. He was strong and seemed to know every trick that I knew. He tried everything. Finally, I was able to get a judo hold on him and pull off his air hose. When he had swallowed more water than he could stand, he gave up. him to the surface. He was close to drowning. Fine job, Nelson. You ought to be on the force. Uh, thanks, Lieutenant. But I didn't do Hal any good. Sure wish that we could have stopped Garth before he killed him. Well, that's one of the heartbreaks of this job. I just talked to June on the phone. How is she? Oh, she's still pretty shaken up. She's going to stick with the show. Well, that's good. Uh, she'll be all right. Lovely acrobatic water star, June Lee. June threw herself into her work and came through in fine shape. She's touring the country now, top attraction in her class. Hello there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. You know, three fifths of the world is covered by the sea. And how little most of us know about that underwater world. Go below with us again next week, huh? For another thrilling adventure in Sea Hunt. It 
It started on a calm, sunny day in the Caribbean on a scientific search for some ancient Mayan Indian relics. Two young scientists, Peter and Nancy Ordway, handled the archaeological end of the expedition. I was in charge of the underseas work. We were trying to find a cave down here just offshore where the Indians supposedly had hidden some religious treasures centuries ago. I was just about to call it a day when a shark gave me a brand new lead. Out of nowhere, an arrow slammed into him. Sharks are tough. They can be killed, of course, but it isn't easy. This one was dead in a matter of seconds. The arrow that killed him must have been fired with tremendous force. And it must have been tipped with a very deadly poison. I drew a mental line from where I'd seen the shark hit by the arrow to where it had probably come from. I spotted it. A trigger line that led to an ancient crossbow, a booby trap, clever and elaborate. Too elaborate to have been set up just to kill sharks. No argument about it. This device had been prepared to deal out death to human intruders like me. When I surfaced, I brought along the weapon that had nearly finished me off down below. This crossbow is really old. How old would you say it is? Well, four centuries at least. 400 years? Yeah. You know what that is? That's an authentic weapon of the Conquistadores. Hey, what about this arrow? Well, the same story, Nan. But the arrowhead. The arrowhead is definitely Mayan Indian. From what you say it did to that shark, it must have really been loaded with poison. It was. See how deep that poison pocket is? Yeah, how do you suppose they sealed it to make it last that long? What makes you think it had to last that long? Mike, are, are you trying to suggest that that was a, a, a booby trap? And that it was meant for us? Well, if somebody wanted to scare us away from that cave, can you think of a better way to do it? Who would want to do a thing like that? The pearl divers, Mike? I don't know. They're the only people we've seen around here. They've been working out beyond that reef the last couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, they're out there now. Let's go out and ask them what they know about it. Well, it's not going to do any good. They're not going to tell us anything. <laughs> Buenas tardes, señor. Como le va? Por favor, puedo hacerle algunas preguntas? Maybe he speaks English. Uh, we found this in the waters off the western island. Is it yours? You know anything about it? Now listen, we're not going to cause you any harm. We're scientists. We've got permission from your government to explore these islands. When we left the Pearl Divers, I was sure that we'd accomplish nothing. 
Actually, we picked up our most promising clue so far to those long lost Mayan relics. Like we've hit pay dirt. I'm sure of it now. You know that amulet the head man was wearing? Yeah, what about it? Well, I made a sketch of it. Look. Why'd you make two sketches of it? Just one of the amulets. This is a sketch of the arrowhead. They look identical to you? Look, the same design, the same workmanship. These people have got to be descended from the group who escaped from the conquistadores. I know it. Mike, you marked the spot where you found the crossbow, didn't you? Yeah. Good. I bet you we find the cave within 10 yards of it. I'll soon find out. Hey, I'm going down with you. Oh, you better stay here. We might run into a series of booby traps down there. I've had a lot of experience in underwater demolition work you have. Well, I could still be of some help to you. No, you better stay here. Now, wait a minute, Mike. You, you can't go down there by yourself, not when you know it's dangerous. Remember what you taught us at Silver Springs? You said that underwater safety was built on the buddy system, remember? Okay, you win. got down without incident or accident and found the rocks that I'd used to mark the booby trap. I ordered Peter to stay put while I scouted around for additional traps. Wartime experience led me to expect that the crossbow would have a mate placed not too far away. That's what the boat hook was for, to probe the vegetation yard by yard. another trigger rope and launched a second poison arrow. I went after the arrow while Pete Ordway searched for the bow that had fired it. It turned out to be the exact mate of booby trap number one. I knew we were on the right track now. The entrance to the cave had to lie somewhere between the traps and probably guarded by a third trap. I was right about the cave entrance, wrong about further obstacles, as far as I could see, that is. We found ourselves inside a kind of natural tunnel. We followed it and ran into currents that kicked up an almost blinding cloud of mud and gravel. The current was flowing through a narrow opening up ahead. Pete Ordway thought that he had a better chance than I to get through, but I pulled rank on him to lead the way. It 
was a tight squeeze, but I made it into a passageway so narrow that I had to slither through it like a serpent. I had told Pete to wait for me, but curiosity got the better of it. From behind me, I heard the roar of falling rocks and thought that I'd been trapped. But it was Pete who'd been caught. I cursed myself for having overlooked this third booby trap, this simple rock slide that had worked where the complex ones had failed. It had worked all right. Though Pete Ordway was still conscious, he'd been badly hurt. I knew now that if we kept on searching, we might find death before we found the shrine. We made it upstairs somehow and managed to get Pete's broken ribs taped up. What happened? I think maybe you cracked a couple of your ribs, boy. You're gonna have to take it easy. How, Mike? What hit me? You set off a booby trap. That, that rock slide, it wasn't an accident? No. Oh, you tripped a wire. It was just lucky that I didn't. You think those pearl divers did it, Mike? Yeah, but I don't see how, man. Without an air tank, they'd drown before they got halfway through that tunnel. It's so long. Well, how was it done, then? Oh, that's not the important question. Not now. I gotta get you to the hospital. We can talk about the other later, huh? No, no. That can wait. But listen, you took quite a bang. Look, that. Mike, we're on the verge of a tremendous discovery. We must be, or that booby trap wouldn't have been where it was. I think you're right. How, how soon can you go back down? First, I gotta get you to a doctor. Look, I tell you, I'll be all right. Are you sure? I'm sure. All right. I'm on my way. Mike, I'm going with you. Hey, one hero in the family is enough. Look, at Silver Springs, you said I was one of your best pupils. Well, not there now. Oh, please, Mike. You might come across a clue to what we're looking for and pass it right by. You're not a trained observer, you know. In archaeology, I mean. What do you say, Pete? Sorry, Mike, she's right. You better take her with you. OK, get into your gear. Inside the cave, we worked our way down the tunnel very carefully, on the lookout not only for traps, but for possible clues to the relics.
found neither clues nor relics. Perhaps that made Nancy impatient, I don't know. But when we reached the rock slide that had nearly killed her husband, she decided to take it from there on her own. I caught up with her, though, and I thought that I'd managed to shake a little sense into her. We continued on together, but not very far. This looked like the end of the road, at least for someone my size. I tried to get through the narrow opening without my tanks, but that didn't work. The lecture that I'd given Nancy didn't work either. The minute my back was turned, off she went again. She wanted five minutes to explore what she was sure now was the long sought undersea shrine. There was nothing that I could do but let her. The shrine was there, as we'd suspected, a strange collection of tiny pre-Columbian idols of incalculable historic significance. Nancy inspected them with beating heart. I knew that she was acting out of scientific zeal or whatever you want to call it, but that didn't make me any the less angry with her or any the less worried about her safety. chief object in the shrine, the figure of the Mayan god of war, overwhelmed Nancy. couldn't know that it was guarded by an unseen booby trap. The sword hilt was a trigger. The closely woven netting weighted along the bottom was too heavy for a woman to lift alone. When Nancy hadn't come out after eight minutes, I was certain that something was wrong. I couldn't waste any more time, but I couldn't reach her from where I was. I had another plan.
Mike, where's Nancy? What happened to her? She's trapped in a cave. It's probably the one we're looking for. You mean you left her there? I had to. The entrance was too small. I couldn't get to it. There's got to be another way. What do you mean? From the other side. An entrance into the tunnel from above water. Close enough for those pearl divers to set off that booby trap that you knocked over. Well, how are you going to find it, this entrance? One of those pearl divers is going to find it for me. No, don't. So you speak English, huh? The cave where you set up the booby trap. There's another entrance from offshore, isn't there? Isn't there? You know, don't you? Don't you? Yes. All right. You're going to take me there. You go first. Any traps, you spring them. The guy took me at my word. He did spring another arrow trap. It missed, but he wasn't through trying. When we got to Nancy, he took the lead in helping to free her, but only because he wanted to trap us both. That didn't work either. My first job was to get Nancy to the surface. I headed her in the right direction. Then I turned back for the Indian. Maybe he didn't deserve a break, but uh, by the time I got to him, he sure needed one. You should have let me die. Yeah, why? I failed my people. The strangers will come now, steal our treasures. The only thing we're going to take are photographs. Pictures? Why? To show the world what a mighty race you came from. Hi there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? When there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of Sea Hunt. <laughs> <laughs>